Hi, this is Rob Packard from Medical Device Academy. And this is a short video explaining what you get when you purchase our process validation procedure, SYS014. So I'm gonna show you actually on the screen the procedure and I'm also gonna show you a guidance document you receive. Unfortunately, we don't have any templates for you that are already in Word format, but the guidance document we have actually has some templates at the back of it and the guidance document is in Word format. And it's from the Global Harmonization Task Force guidance. So here we go. So here's the guidance document that I was referring to. It's from the Global Harmonization Task Force. You can find it on the International uh, Medical Device Regulators Forum, imdrf.org website. They have a link for all the um, archived uh, GHTF guidance documents. The one you're looking for is from study group three. It's document 99-10 from 2004, second edition. So they actually revised it. Um, I think there was some more additional information than I kind of liked in edition one, but edition two is the one that they finally settled on. Um, and if you look over this very quickly, they have in installation qualification, IQ, OQ, operational qualification, and performance qualification. They have examples of each of the three. Um, I don't remember whether they have a master validation plan. Here is an example, but they had a master validation plan example or template in the previous version. So when you go through this guidance, and, and this you could download for free, but we include it uh, to people that purchase our procedure uh, because everybody wants the templates. So here it gives you a, an idea of what should be included in an IQ, what should be included in an OQ, what should be included in a PQ, and then your final validation report. And then when we get to the appendices, they have Annex A is statistical methods. which a lot of people might find helpful if they're writing a statistical analysis procedure or statistical techni techniques procedure for uh, compliance. Here's an example of a control chart. Um, eventually I'll get to the, the examples here. Okay, here's what I was looking for. So Annex B, example of a validation and ABC medical device company process validation protocol. And then they have the signature blocks. Here's the IQ, then the OQ, and they even show you the, the uh, run charts they create during it. They give you sample data. And then at the end, you have the PQ, performance qualification. And then finally, they have a final report. So you can actually use this. It's in Word format. You can copy and paste it and edit and use this for your own uh, company's uh, templates that you're gonna use for process validation. And then to satisfy the requirement for a procedure for process validation, this is our procedure, it's six pages. It's a process validation procedure, SYS 14. This is uh, draft five in our company. So every time we update our versions, we update the draft number. If you purchase it, first thing you would do is delete the draft, put your own name instead of mine, indicate the effective date that you're approving it, uh, wherever it says company name, you would replace it with your company name. You would indicate in the revision history what the date is and what your document change notice or ECO is. Um, you would put your name here as well. And this is for initial release of a quality system. And then the roles and responsibilities for different people that will conduct validation or sign off on validation reports. Here's the step-by-step -step what you would do, master validation planning, now there is no regulatory requirement for a master validation plan. So if you don't wanna do a master validation plan, you don't have to do a master validation plan. However, when you have a larger facility, not just one process and one piece of equipment, but you have multiple pieces of equipment and multiple pieces of software, that's when a master validation plan becomes helpful. It's just like uh, calibration equipment. You don't need really a calibration system if you have one piece of a calibrated equipment. But if you have multiple pieces, you need a system and it even helps to have software to manage it all. So if you have multiple pieces of equipment and multiple processes that require validation, it helps to have a plan to indicate these are the protocols, these are the reports, this is the expiration date, this is the equipment it's associated with, and this is when it should be done again next. 
and that will really help you keep track of all the documentation and find it if you're in the middle of an FDA inspection. Um, then we have the IQ section, the OQ section, and the PQ section. And then finally, a software validation section as well. For those of you that are doing software validation for automated equipment that has software, or um, if you're doing software tool validation, so it's a quality system software tool like Dropbox or DocuSign or um, some other software tool, then we have a procedure specifically for that. That's SYS 51. But if you, you're talking about automated equipment, this is the way you would go. And then we have monitoring and measuring of our, our process validation procedure. We have training and retraining for our process validation procedure, risk management, and finally the records that would be associated. So you would have um, your master validation plan, your validation protocols, your reports, um, any monitoring or measuring of process parameters, and then equipment registers. So that, that's one other thing I, I forgot to include here. So we actually have just a log sheet that includes um, places for you to list all the equipment and indicate what uh, the next date is for calibration or maintenance or um, revalidation of that equipment. So that's everything you get when you purchase our process validation procedure. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. And I hope this was helpful. Bye-bye.